As far as we can tell, he was injured first during the first eight weeks of his life. As after we brought him home, after we adopted him, we noticed that he had some movement problems with his jaw, but uh, we just thought it was a congenital defect. Uh, the problem became more apparent, I guess after about 12 to 18 months, when he started losing movement in his jaw. And by the time he was two years old, the only toy he could play with was a rubber frisbee. That's as far as he could open his mouth. And that's when we took him into our local veterinarian and the vet tried to realign his jaw and figured out he couldn't. So he took some x-rays and that's where we noticed the problem. There was a bony mass that had been breaking and rehealing and breaking and rehealing for about two years. And by that time it just, he couldn't open his mouth anymore. Well, Leo's injury was a little unusual uh, in that he'd been having progressive problems uh, opening his mouth and eating over about a year, year and a half period. Uh, and so when he came in, we did a physical exam, uh, realized that he could only open his mouth probably about an inch, maybe even a little less than an inch. Um, and then through some advanced imaging uh, that we were able to provide uh, through UT, uh, we figured out that he had a probably an old trauma that had resulted in a fracture of the back part of his jaw and that was getting progressively worse. Uh, after a long discussion with the clients in terms of the pluses and minuses, uh, we took him to surgery and through a small approach behind the jaw, actually removed a, a large portion of uh, the joint uh, between the skull and the back part of that jaw. And so it was probably about an hour and a half surgery, uh, removed all of that reactive bone that was causing the problem with the restricted movement, as well as because of that bone development, he also had a problem with his ear, uh, or his, his inner ear. And so we also removed a part of that bony portion of the skull to remove that source of pain as well. Dr. Wood did an absolutely outstanding job on the surgery. The way he explained it, it was a somewhat risky surgery not only because of the location of the injury, but also because it wasn't something that was common. But he walked us through it, uh, told us exactly what he'd be doing. Everyone took real good care of Leo. But we had an outstanding experience with Reach Hospital. Um, Dr. Wood did a great job, and all of the staff here really helped. Leo's doing great. For the first time in his life, he can actually open his mouth far enough to play with a tennis ball. He can take the tennis ball in, and he can release it without using his paws or anything. Well, as long as there's no recurrence of the bony interference between the skull and the, and the jaw and scar tissue that uh, builds up, his prognosis should actually be excellent for long-term normal use of the, of the jaw, being able to eat, drink, run, jump, play, which he seems to be doing at this point very nicely. And the owners are also doing a very good job with the post-operative rehab, um, which you know you wouldn't think of rehab being important for a jaw injury, but uh, you know it's uh, it's very important for his long-term uh, recovery as well. Luckily, it's easy for most Labradors to eat, so it's instant rehab for for Leo. Well, we were recommended here by our vet, but we did our own research on the Reach Hospital itself. Um, we care for all our animals a great deal. They're part of the family. We wanted to make sure that Leo received the best care and had the most experienced physicians we could find. So Reach was the obvious choice. <laughs>